Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you please uh, tell me in the chat if you can hear me already? Great, great. I'm happy to hear. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Luisa Gomez. Uh, I am an international student advisor at Wageningen University. And today I'm going to tell you something about uh, the university since I'm also an alumnus. And at the end of the presentation, we're also going to have some time for questions. So. Please save all of your queries and your questions for the end of the presentation, and I hope I can help you today. So I'm going to start sharing my screen now. Uh, can you please let me know if you see it? Great, great. So I'm going to share already my presentation from the beginning and we're going to start. So I want to tell you some things about Wageningen University. Like I said, I, I work at Wageningen as an international student advisor. So my main role at the university is to help people that have questions about admission, about uh, how to apply to the program, uh, etc. And today I also want to tell you a little bit more about what my experience was in marketing and, and what we have to offer as a university. Excuse me, I'm having a little bit of an issue with sharing my presentation. So let's see if now this works. Okay, so for giving you a little bit of an introduction, we should talk about what is going on uh, right now in the world. So as you know, our world is changing and the population is growing really fast and even though in some places there are a lot there's a lot of prosperity uh, there are also places around the world where the land use for food production and for agriculture is reaching its limits at the same time you know that climate change is uh, visible and fossil fuels are uh, getting scarce and scarce uh, but meanwhile at the same time people are becoming more aware of of this situation and are giving more importance to healthy and efficient food. So in this changing world, that is the real specialization of Wageningen in university. So uh, our domain is good and safe food uh, and food production, uh, food security and a healthy living environment. So our domain is to explore the potential of nature to improve the quality of life. So Wageningen University is a renowned fundamental research uh, institution and it also has a strong, a strong global position as a supplier of application-oriented and field research, field-based research. And at the same time, uh, same time imagining we have uh, many students uh, from all over the world uh, that we are trying to educate to be professionals in the domain of healthy food and living environment every year. So I'm going to show you a video of Wageningen. Can you please let me know if you're here? Wageningen University okay, great. is one of the leading international universities in the field of healthy food and living environment. You will find this university in the Netherlands, also called Holland, located in Europe. Wageningen campus is a place where students, teachers and researchers from the university and research institutes exchange ideas. Here, you will focus on current and future global issues that are of increasing importance to both industry and government. Wageningen University has over 10,000 students, 25% of which are international students representing more than 100 nationalities. You are ensured personal guidance throughout your student career with a student-teacher ratio of 7 to 1. Our research and education are based on a fundamental scientific approach and we focus strongly on practical application. During your study, you will work on real cases from the field using state-of-the-art research facilities which will aid you in becoming a professional in innovative and groundbreaking research. Wageningen Campus offers you excellent student facilities 
including an app to help you find an available workspace with a computer, a huge modern library that is open 14 hours a day, and a meeting center called Impulse, an inspiring meeting place for scientists, policymakers, entrepreneurs, students, and citizens. In Wageningen, you will meet students and researchers from all over the world, and you will benefit from a diverse cultural exchange. Studying here prepares you for working in international teams anywhere in the world. Okay, so were you all able to hear? Okay, I hope you were, and I hope you had like a little uh, overview of how Wageningen University looks. Um, I will continue with my presentation now. So something else that is super important about Wageningen is that it's one of the top ranked universities in the world. And according to influential rankings, uh, the university ranks world's best in the field of agriculture and forestry. And in the Kose Heats, that it's uh, a, a Dutch uh, ranking, um, the university ranked as best university in the Netherlands for the 17th time in a row, according to the students. So as you can see um, in the national Taiwan ranking, we are number one in the field of agriculture and environment, uh, and in number one in agriculture, number two in environment. And the national Taiwan ranking compares around 300 universities on different criteria that are paper performance, research productivity, research impact, and research excellence. Uh, we are in the Times Higher Ranking Education, number 53 in the world. And well, this, you know, that is a, um, a ranking that judges world-class universities across all their core missions. And for us, is teaching, research, citations, international perspectives, and industry income. Uh, as I told you, and the Kelsey Hits, we are number one, the best university in, in the Netherlands. And in the QS ranking, um, we are, are among the 10 best, percent, 10 best percent of the best universities in the world. So we are ranking uh, number uh, 115. And in the Shanghai ranking, we are number one in agricultural sciences for the sixth time in a row. So studying at Wageningen. So why, why studying at Wageningen? So we have 19 bachelor programs, 30 master programs, and six graduate schools. And we are also the world's leading supplier of scientific education in healthy food and living environment domain. And our education has a strong international focus, which is underlined by the composition of the student population. So of the total number of students, of Wageningen, around 21% are non-Dutch. Um, and in total, all of our students originate from more than 100 different countries. So it makes us the most international university in the Netherlands. And in some programs, it can be up to 40% that the students are international. Um, well, as I mentioned before, uh, we are the largest education and research institute in the Netherlands. And we have an international community that has uh, more than 100 nationalities. And one of the advantages of studying in Wageningen is the multidisciplinary, multidisciplinarity of the study programs. And also that all the programs are very practically oriented. So you can really apply what you have learned in your, in your classes and in different projects and in different practicals and study groups. And also that there is a lot of personal contact. So as you saw in the video, we have a ratio of uh, seven students per one professor. So as you can see, you will always have support from the professor, from the assistants, from the coaches, from the deans. So this is something very special about academia that you have very close contact with the staff. And something that I really liked also when I was studying was that you can design your own study program. So the programs are very tailor-made. So even though every master program and bachelor program have uh, mandatory courses, you are also allowed to choose uh, from other programs different optional courses. And when you start your program, you can have an appointment with your study advisor and you can decide what are going to be these optional courses and if you want to take them from different programs. So at the end, you really choose what you want to do in your program. So that is how you design it yourself. So that makes, uh, makes Wageningen very special. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what the structure of the programs is, but I am going to go into detail uh, in a moment. And another thing is 
the city of Wageningen and the location of Wageningen. So Wageningen is a municipality and a historic town that is in central Netherlands and in the province of uh, Gelderland. It is famous for Wageningen University, of course, who specializes in life sciences. And the municipality has around 3,800 uh, 3, uh, inhabitants, of which many students are from all over the, the world. And uh, so Wageningen is situated in the center of the Netherlands. Uh, it's close to big cities like Utrecht, Arnhem. Uh, it's also very easy to get to Amsterdam, to The Hague and Rotterdam. And even though we don't have our own train station, it is really easy to get to, to the station that is close in the next city that is Ede, just by bike or by bus. And then from there, there are connections to everywhere in the Netherlands. So it's really easy to travel around. And well, not only Wageningen is centrally located, but also the Netherlands is centrally located in Europe. So it's really easy for you to travel around Europe. So you can go to uh, Belgium, to France, to Germany. So really, it's a great location. And it's a student town. So because it is a student town, there are a lot of activities for the international students and for the local students. Uh, there are student associations, study associations, international associations. So we have, for instance, more than 100 of these associations. The, start, the student associations are more like to get to know people. And in these cases, uh, there are not so many internationals, but there are also some other organizations like ISO, that is uh, an international student uh, association that uh, really is focused on bringing culture to Wageningen. So you have like a lot of courses like dancing or cooking, or for instance, one day you learn Spanish, or one day you learn Portuguese, one day you learn, one day you learn Dutch. So it is really, really easy to, to meet people. And of course, we have the study associations that as its name says it, it's mainly for focusing on studying. So you can, when you start your program, you can ask your study advisor or your, or your classmates if there are some groups that you can join. And it's very nice for you to, to already create your network. And at the beginning of your program, there is also this activity that is called the AID, which are the annual introduction days. So you have a week where you meet people from your program and from other programs, you go around the city, so it's really easy for you to, to get acquainted to, to Wageningen and to the surroundings and to meet people. So it's going to be, from the beginning, a really nice experience. I'm going to show you another video, very short, about Wageningen, if it works. So please let me know, again, if you can hear. Ah, I see that you say that it's not very clear. I'm sorry. Now, what kind of place you is Wageningen? You know the video? Well, Wageningen is really a small town surrounded by really beautiful nature. And the fact that it's so small means that it comes with some really big advantages. You can get anywhere within 15 minutes of cycling. And if you step out on the streets, you'll certainly meet someone you know. And Wageningen is also really a student city. So you'll have many activities going on that are really made for students. So it's always very vibrant and there's always something to do here. Thanks for watching and enjoy. See ya. So as you heard him, there are many, many student activities that you can do in Wageningen. It's also a very picturesque small city. So there is a main shopping street. Uh, there is a market on, a market on the weekends and on Wednesdays. Uh, it's very close to the river. So there's also a lot of nature around. So it's really a great location. Well, of course, if you are into nature. So I really recommend living in Wageningen when you come to study here, because of course there are some people that live in the towns around, but it's a lot uh, easier if you are already in Wageningen to, to have a room here too. So I'm gonna go to my next slide. I'm now standing at... Excuse me. Excuse me with the with the computer, but it's having some issues with wanting to go to the next slide. So I'm gonna have to share my screen again. And I would like to know a small can, town surrounded by really beautiful. Tell me if you can see my new slide now. If someone can tell me in the chat. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. So now we're going to talk about the campus. 
So the campus of Wageningen University is one of the best features of the university, in my opinion. Um, it has like around 7,000 uh, square meters and it's home to students, to teachers, researchers and staff from over 100 different countries, which I have said in multiple occasions already. And it's in the center of, uh, in the center of the campus, you will find the educational buildings. That is where our students spend most of the time. Uh, but in between classes, there is also enough nature around to enjoy art or to discover uh, the river, the lakes that are around the, the campus. And of course, there are new buildings uh, being built at the moment. So our campus is really rapidly evolving and growing. There are also some industri industries in the campus. We have Unilever and Friesland Campina, and we're building a new discussion center. So there are a lot of events that are going to take place there and a lot of new education buildings for giving more space to students to, to study or to make do uh, group work, etc. Uh, well, we have extensive sports facilities. So we have uh, also more than 100 different sports at the sports center. So we have uh, tennis and we have uh, swimming and rowing, climbing, even Quidditch. So there are a lot of different sports that you can do. Uh, you have to pay the sports rights when you start your program, and then you have access to the gym and to, and to all of these courses. Of course, you have to subscribe for this, but once you're here, of course, we can help you with all of this. Uh, we also have excellent research facilities. So we have laboratories, we have greenhouses, we have places where they have uh, farm animals uh, breeding, etc. We also have a program that is called Vaginine in Into Languages. Where you can take language courses so we can take Dutch, English and whatever language you're interested in. Of course it would be very nice to learn a little bit of Dutch but it's very easy to communicate with everybody in Wageningen uh, just with English because it's a very international city and of course uh, we are an international institution so the main uh, spoken language is English. Uh, we also have in the campus the Start Hub of Wageningen which is a startup incubator that is for students, for PhDs, and for recent graduates. And the focus of the Start Hub is to develop entrepreneurial competences for students and for student entrepreneurs, of course. And we have, as you saw in the video, a really big library in one of the main buildings of the university that is uh, open for 14 hours per day. And inside of the library, you have study rooms, you have silent rooms, so you can do group work, uh, you can study for your exams, and you can go from very early in the morning from late in the night. So the opening hours are very good. Uh, going to continue now. Excuse me again, but for some reason my computer doesn't want to continue. So now we're gonna start talking about the program, uh, the, the programs that we offer in Bachelor in. And one of the questions we have is how are we going to fit 9 billion people in 2050, in 2050, I mean. So as I was saying at the beginning, the world population is growing steadily and is projected to reach around 9 billion by the year 2050. So in less than 40 years, 2 billion people will need more housing, more house, more food, jobs, etc. So to meet these demands sustainable, we really need to do a lot. So this will be an essential job, especially considering the, that the amount of agricultural land will not increase. And moreover, climate change and population pressure are likely to reduce available land. So there is going to be a challenge. And that is what Wageningen in University wants to uh, improve, or this is one of our goals. So to find more technical solutions to all of these issues and to reduce food waste, uh, to come up with more sustainable food production uh, alternatives. And of course, we also want to uh, focus on other topics like, for instance, uh, obesity and uh, topics as ending hunger, hunger, achieving food security, better nutrition, and of course, promoting sustainable agriculture. So in this sense, even though there is no single path to a world without hunger, <laughs> we can focus on a more integrated approach. And that's what the interdisciplinarity research and collaboration with governments, private parties and research institutes are going to help us with. And Wageningen University is part of these research institutes. So we offer very technical programs, pro programs that are uh, 
focused on these kind of issues. So for instance, we have six English taught bachelor programs. I know that at the beginning I told you we have 19 bachelor programs, which is actually true, but from those 19 bachelor programs, we only have six that are uh, taught in English. So we have environmental sciences, soil, water and atmosphere, international land and water management, food technology, animal sciences, and tourism. And we also have many master programs. So they are divided in specific themes, and also they are uh, a group uh, grouped in the in the core uh, domains that I mentioned at the beginning from the presentation, which are society and well-being, natural resources and living environment, food, feed, and biobased production. And uh, besides that, they are uh, subdivided in six themes that are food, earth and environment, technology, health, economics and social sciences, and nature and agriculture. So for instance, we have in the society part, we have problems like management and consumer studies, development and rural innovation, international student, uh, international development students. And then we have in the food feed and bio-based production, we have programs as plant sciences, plant biotechnology, bioinformatics, animal sciences, and like in the intersection between these two core domains in bargaining, we also have food safety, food quality management, food technology. And in the part of natural resources and living environment, we of course have climate studies, uh, earth and environment, uh, biology, organic agriculture, aquaculture and marine uh, resource management. So we have a whole world of, of options for master programs that I can show you here. I'm gonna leave the slide a little bit uh, for, for a couple of seconds so you can give a, an overview of the programs that we offer because there are a lot. Of course, if you have questions at the end, you can let me know. Uh, but so you have an idea of what type of prog uh, programs we offer at Lachemy. And I see that I saw in the chat that you were also asking about PhD programs. You can ask those questions at the end. However, this presentation is more focused on the uh, ma bachelor and master programs. You can also send me an email at the end of the presentation. I will leave my email with you and I can give you some more information about this. So now I want to talk about the structure of the programs. So as I was telling you, we have the bachelor and the master program. So the bachelor programs uh, consist of three years or have a duration of three years and consists of lectures, practical study groups, and excursions. And these excursions are uh, blended education. So you have part of the practical is uh, in the university with, with your teachers explaining, you, explaining to you what you have to do and also the more practical part where you actually go to the excursion and afterwards do a report. And of course, you also have to do a bachelor thesis. And the master programs, they have a duration of two years uh, you also have a lot of lectures, but uh, you can go in more depth in the topic that you are interested in, uh, and you can choose different specializations in each program. So for each specialization, there are uh, courses that are mandatory that you have to take, and in, uh, within these courses, you can also, uh, uh, for instance, belong to a research group and do your thesis there or your internship there. So it is all very connected. and. Another uh, thing that is different from the master's and the bachelor programs is that in the master program, you do a course that is called academic consultancy training or ACT, which is a mandatory course for the majority of the master programs of work. And it is a, a course where students of different uh, studies and nationalities work together in one team. So it is a course in which students work with five to seven people uh, in a consultancy question for around eight weeks. And the students will be guided by a coach an academic advisor from BERT, and it is scheduled five times throughout the year. You focus on a consultancy uh, question. So because you're gonna have people from different backgrounds, uh, it's a really, really nice project because everybody has, of course, their own views of how you have to do things. So I think it's a very enriching uh, course. And then of course, in the, in the masters, you also have to do an internship and the internship is around four months and provides you with the opportunity to work outside Wageningen 
you have to do it in a host organization that can either be a company, a public institution, a consultancy firm, or a research organization. It can be another university, it can be an NGO. But of course, the, the goal of this is to broaden your academic horizon. So the host organization should be of sufficiently high academic standard to reflect the desired level that Bahena and University wants. And uh, with this, uh, study advisors can help you to find your internship, but it's also the responsibility of the student to, to find where they want to do their practical. And you also have to do a master thesis that is around six months. So now we're going to talk about something very important, which are the admission requirements. So for the bachelor programs, you need to have a secondary school uh, or your diploma, and it has to be equivalent to the Dutch pre-university diploma. So when you are going to apply, then you're going to do like a study checkup to see if uh, your bachelor meets the requirement, uh, your high school uh, meets the requirements of Aachen University. That has to be consulted with the Student Service Center. I will also give you the email address at the end of the presentation. But it's very important that you already start checking what are the requirements. Um, you have to just type on Google how to apply for a bachelor program. Uh, and then you will get all the information there at the board website. And if you want to apply for a master program, you need to have a bachelor degree that is relevant to the master program you want to apply for. So of course, uh, there are some exceptions, but if you want to, for instance, apply for food technology, you have to have some background in chemistry or in food sciences or something related to it. Same with all the programs. You have to have uh, studies that are relevant to what you want to study. Uh, in the same with the bachelors. You have to study subjects that are relevant to the program and they have to be at the required level. So at the end, I'm going to show you a slide of what are these uh, subjects and it's mainly mathematics, physics, uh, I think chemistry, depending on the program you want to apply for. And for both, you have to go, uh, well, not for both, for the bachelor program, you only need your diploma, but for the master's programs, you need to also have a GPA of 70%. So that means that your grades need to be at least 70% of the maximum grade that you can get at the university. And of course, there are different standards depending of where you come from. There is also an explanation in the website. And of course, you can always send us an email and ask if you think your GPA is sufficient for applied to Wageningen. And another very important admission requirement is uh, meeting the English language proficiency requirement. So for bachelor students, you need to have um, a TOEFL or an IELTS or a Rater exam. And for master programs, you have to have the same. But in here, the scores are different because we have master programs that are level one and level two. So for level one, the score is around 80 for TOEFL and for master's level two is 92. So that depends on what you want to study. I can also give you some more specific information when you send me an email. And for IELTS, it generally is 6 or 6.5, but with uh, a high score for speaking. And then I'm going to go to the next slide, if my computer allows it. So now we're going to talk about something very important. Of course, there are also the financial issues. So unfortunately in Bargenia, we don't have a lot of scholarships at the moment for international students uh, because these scholarships are given by the government and every year the budget changes. So uh, it doesn't depend so much on Bargenia but more what the, the Netherlands government decides to allocate to each university. So there are some options that I can also tell you about if you send me an email. But for self-paying students, the tuition fee is around 18,700 per year for two years of, of uh, master programs. Uh, so each year is uh, this amount. For living expenses is around 11,000 11, per year. So that is for housing, for food, for transportation, for your books, etc. And other expenses are around 500 per year, which are, for instance, your health insurance, uh, the handling fees of the university that they charge you for uh, doing all of the administrative part with the with the money, and well, 
on other additional expenses. And for instance, another thing that is very important to consider is that as an international student, you also need a visa. And this visa costs around 300 euros. And the International Office of Agenin will, ap will apply for you for this visa. So they will contact you in time and they will ask you for all the documents you need and they will apply for it and you will receive your residence permit once you're here in Bachening. And with this residence permit, uh, I don't know, it's a very common question. Maybe I should address already. Uh, it is only possible to work for a certain amount of hours or for the summer months. However, for working, you always need a work permit. So this uh, residence permit that you receive is only a student permit. For having a work permit, the person that will employ you will have to apply for that. So it's a little bit complicated. You really need to, to find a place where they want to apply for a work permit for you. So it's, it's not that easy to work as a non-EU student. So the application deadlines uh, for the bachelor programs is the 1st of May and for the master programs is the 15th of April. So what you need to do is uh, apply by, by a study link, that is the, the organization that handles all the applications for all universities in the Netherlands, and you have to create an account and send your application there. And after that, Wageningen will contact you and then you have to get access to the application portal of board, and then you have to upload a, your bachelor diploma or your high school diploma, and you have to upload your grades, your English proficiency exam, and you also need a motivation letter. But this is for the master programs. For bachelors, you don't need a motivation letter. And something very important is that uh, you need to have official uh, translated um, scores of your, uh, of your um, GPA and also your diploma, they have to be official translation. So there has to be a recognized translator. So the, the documents can be ac accepted by Wageningen University. So now uh, I want to ask you if you want to be part of this and if you want to work on today's challenges, as I told you in my presentation, uh, and we're very looking forward to, to hear your questions and welcome you at work. And now I want to invite you to the next steps uh, on the 24th of February, we have the Virtual Masters Open Day. Uh, it's going to be, of course, an online event because of the restrictions with COVID, but uh, hopefully at some point we can again do the uh, campus open day. Uh, but for, line, for now, it's going to be online events. And on the 21st of April, we're going to have the Virtual Bachelors Open Day, uh, also online. Uh, so you can also chat with uh, different students, with study advisors, with program directors, with staff. We're also going to have webinars, we're going to have presentations. So it is a really good idea to join this event if you still have questions after this presentation. And if you want to get to know uh, more about the student life and about the international uh, students experience. Uh, I also want to uh, give you my email address. My email address is, as you can see in the screen, students at bird.nl. I will try to answer as soon as possible. You can ask me any question you have, like from application to my own experience as, a, as an alumnus from Wageningen, and I will be very happy to help you uh, come to Wageningen if it's possible. So now I'm going to have some time for questions, and I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. So uh, I don't know if I should go through the questions, I guess, or or how is it going to work with <laughs> with the questions? I'm going to check in the chat what you have asked. So if there are law programs here, well, it depends of what you mean with this. We have some. Uh, programs that do uh, talk about law, but this is mainly about environmental laws and sustainability laws. It's not like to uh, form you as a lawyer. So we don't have that type of program and computer science for PhDs. So for PhD programs, what we have is vacancies. So you have to go to the vacancy website uh, for PhDs of board, and then you can see all the projects that you can apply for. 
you can also contact teachers that you're interested in working with, but uh, the, the process is very different. It's like applying for a job. And in a PhD, uh, you get a salary and you, you work also giving some lectures and practicals, but it is different than the master programs and the bachelor programs. So for questions about that, you can send me an email. I think someone what is, is having their hand up. So maybe I can, or someone can unmute them so they can ask me the question. Um, good afternoon, Miss. Good afternoon. All right. Uh, I have I had posted my questions on the chat, but I wish to reiterate. I am very much interested in for her pursuing my career in bioinformatics in both research and education. Although for a more niche interest, I am also curious to study Indonesian microbial metagenomics and their application on agriculture, which means we are studying the genomes of particular bacteria and how we can apply them to improving our agriculture, our Indonesian agriculture. Wageningen University and research seems to be incredibly promising for me, but I do have some concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss, a uh, Master of Science in Bioinformatics in Wageningen appears to be covered by Stunet and or Orange Knowledge Program based on my findings in studyfinder.nl website. But it, it just so occurred to me that apparently Stunet OKP LPDP Scholarship Program does not seem to cover uh, Wageningen's bioinformatics program. So uh, I'm not entirely sure whether bioinformatics MSc is actually covered by either or, or both of those scholarships or not. Okay, that is a very good question. So the thing is that for the scholarships, for any scholarships, the first thing that you need to do is to get admission to the program. So after that, the committee and that will be the stone and the orange tulip and the OKP, all of these programs will evaluate all the, the applications and we'll see if you are applying for one of the programs that is in the core groups or in the core topics that are going to be addressed that year. So that every day, every year is different. So the only thing that I suggest you to do is already applying because the deadlines are coming very soon, especially for the scholarships. And, and to maybe send uh, an email to stunt or something that, or because I was telling you, as I was telling you in the presentation, um, we don't make the decisions exactly about the, the scholarships. So it's better if you contact the scholarship organization for that. But uh, the first thing for sure is that you need to have your admission letter to Wageningen and then you have to be invited by the community to apply for the scholarship. So that is a, the, the first thing you need to do. But you can also send me an email for uh, more specific information to students at bird.nl and I will try to, to help you if possible. Thank you. I really of course. appreciate it. Of course. So I see in the chat that some people are asking how many students are accepted in first period. Uh, okay, so we don't have like a, a maximum number of students that we accept. Like everybody that applies, as long as they meet the conditions, they will be accepted. So we don't have a minimum or a maximum. So that is very nice. So it's it's okay if you apply because we don't have like a limit. Um, I see that people are interested in the issue of climate change, green economy, sustainable refinancing. All of these topics we address in different programs of Wageningen. Uh, if we have biomedical sciences faculty in Wageningen University, no, unfortunately we don't have biomedical sciences. Uh, we have some programs like related to human health or uh, biomedics, which are nutrition and health, but it's not one of our core programs. Let me see. Uh, what are the what are tips to be accepted on Wageningen? Well. Uh, the most important thing is that you meet the requirements. And for that, like I mentioned, you have to have a good GPA of at least 70%. You need to have uh, your English proficiency exam. And you have to state in your motivation letter why you want to come to Wageningen, what is your relevant experience. And you can add a recommendation letters, all of these things. But the, the thing that I always advice to every student is to just apply because that is the only way that you will know you we don't have any application fee 
So it is really easy. It's one of the easiest application processes. You just go to the website and upload all your documents. So, and if there's something wrong, the university will contact you so you can have some time for uploading the documents uh, again. But like I told you, the deadline is 15 of April. And also if you want to be considered for some of the scholarships, you have to apply a lot earlier because the scholarships have earlier deadlines. The uh, application fee, we don't, call, uh, we don't ask for an application fee. Uh, let me see, is there an Erasmus joint programs uh, related to food studies? Yes, there is uh, a program that is, uh, well, I don't think it's an Erasmus joint program, but it is a joint program. I think it's uh, the European Masters in Food Technology. You should check it out in our website. It's a very interesting one, but that one, in, that actually is the one that does have a maximum number of students because you normally apply for the program of food technology, but you can say that you're interested in the European masters. And then from those people that apply to food technology, some will be selected to the, to the European masters. Someone asked me that they're interested in applying to forest and nature conservation, but preparing an English certificate. Should I require uh, submit my requirements to StudyLink? So yes, you can already apply even th though that you don't have your English exam. So you can apply already and say to what university you want to apply because StudyLink, as I was telling you, is the, the network that helps with applications for all universities in the Netherlands. So you have to put your interest and in what program, what university. What. And at the end, you're going to get access to the application portal and then you can upload your, your English certificate uh, exam. But that can happen until 15th of April. So you still have time, but I recommend you to do it as soon as possible and try to get the, the exam as soon as you can. Short courses in Wageningen. There are some short courses and there are also some MOOCs that you can do online, but it is a little bit difficult now with the moving around. So I'm not sure if a lot of short courses are being offered. I will have to go into detail with that and ask some of my colleagues so you can send me an email about it. And for work permit, for internship is not required. So you can apply for an internship without having a work permit because this is not considered work, it's considered still part of your studies. Even though in some cases you can get a little bit of uh, money in return for doing the internship, although it's not that common, but it's okay, you don't need a work permit. Uh, for PhD programs, like I said, you have to apply for the vacancies. So we don't have like a deadline or we don't have like a specific moment where you can apply for it. You just have to go to the vacancies website and check what we are offering at that moment. You can also send me an email and I can send you a link for the, for the vacancies. The requirements for master program. Well, like I said, uh, you need to have a bachelor that is relevant to the program you want to apply. Uh, you need to have a good GPA of 70% and you need to have your English proficiency exam. And it's not necessary to have already sent your proposal of a thesis that you're going to discuss here when you have already chosen a research uh, uh, group and when you have already talked to your study advisor, so it's not necessary. And if you have questions about the programs, I think for specific questions about programs, you need to contact the program directors. So you can send me an email at students at word.nl and I will put you in contact with the person that is a program director or the food sciences programs like technology and uh, food quality, food safety, et cetera. Yes, I'm sorry, I did not mention the new program that is sustainable business and innovation. Yes, it is open for application. I'm very sorry that I did not add it to my presentation. It's a very new program, but yeah, the applications are open for that one too. And about, the IELTS, if you don't have the required uh, scores that they tell you on the website, I mean, the thing is that the student service center and the, the admissions board will check that you meet all the requirements that are stated in the website. So if you don't have the six for speaking, then it's going to be a little bit difficult to get admitted. So you can still try or you can send them an email. They have this email that is ssc at wur.nl so ssc at wur.nl you can ask them there uh, how long is the estimated time to get the letter of admission 
So normally it's around eight weeks, but that depends on what in what moment you send it. I mean, if you send it at the beginning of the year, it might be that you get the letter very fast because there are still not so many applications coming, but if you wait until the end, it might take up to eight weeks. I have a bachelor degree in civil engineering, but have worked two years in banking industry, and I mean to apply for masters in sustainable business and innovation. I think it might be possible that you get admission. Like I said, it's better if you try to talk to a study advisor of the program, but I think you have a relevant experience. I, of course, cannot guarantee that you're going to get uh, admitted, but it's better if you contact the, the study advisor. Um, so if my certificate and transcript is already officially translated in English from my university, is it accepted? Well, it is accepted as, as long as it's an official translation. So if it's recognized by an authority that is an official translation, that it has a stamp, uh, then it can be accepted by Bahrini. And how many years the letter of admission is uh, valid is for one year. So you can also like, if you get your letter of admission now, you can also get enrolled next year, but it's only one year. Does a thesis theme have to be created when registering? No, that is not necessary. And I see that someone is asking SSC at WUR.NL like this. Yes, that is correct. That is the email. So you can, that is a student service center. You can ask very specific questions about admission, about programs, about student advisors. They can really help you a lot. So I have received an admission letter from VOR, but I need the scholarship to support the tuition fee and other costs to receive the scholarship. So I need to wait for the invitation from VOR. Yes, so if you go to our website of scholarships, we have three different types of scholarships or not we have, but there are three different types of scholarships. So the first one is the one that you have to be invited for. So for that one, you have to already have your, your admission letter and the admission board will consider which applications are valid and which applications are going to be invited to apply for a scholarship. And you have to wait for the invitation because unfortunately it's not possible for you to directly apply for the scholarships. The second type is, for instance, the Holland scholarship, which is a scholarship that you can apply yourself for. It is not a full scholarship. It's only a payment of, well, it used to be around 5,000 euros and that can help you cover some moving expenses or food or the first month. Okay, so it's one payment one time and you have to send like a budget and a justification of why you need to get this scholarship. For that one, you can apply yourself, but it's also uh, for specific focus countries. I think Indonesia is there, but I'm not sure yet. You will have to check that in the, in the scholarships website. And the third one is scholarships from the con your own country. Or for instance, uh, in my country, there are some organizations that have scholarships for different universities here. So you can start the process yourself, but that of course you will have to find because I'm not sure where the options are in your countries. Uh, loan funding for study masters. Unfortunately, we don't have loans. We only have the scholarships I was mentioning. So in these scholarships that you are invited to apply, there are some options like, for instance, the Orange Knowledge Program that actually covers the tuition fees and the living expenses. And there are some excellent scholarships. So if you have a very high GPA and you're a very good student in your bachelor, you might get invited to us an excellent scholarship and they will pay for your tuition fees, but you still have to pay for your um, living expenses. But sometimes the scholarships can be combined, but you need to be invited, like I was saying. And another question. I want to ask if the board provides conditional offering letter or just unconditional offer. So you can get an, uh, a conditional offering. So if you don't meet the requirements completely yet, they can give you a, a conditional letter and they will only give you the unconditional letter once you have submitted all the documents that are necessary. So that is also something you can ask the student service center, the SSC at board.nl, because then at least you will make sure that you will be able to apply already, even though you don't have one of the requirements for instance. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Do you have any more questions? You can type them because we still have 10 minutes or I don't see any hands up. I don't know if I'm missing it because there's a lot of people, but please just let me know if there are more questions. 
So this, this question that I was just posted is very, very good one. If my previous study was in English, am I exempted from English requirement? So there are some exceptions, exemptions, I mean, but unfortunately there are not um, for, all, for every country. So the countries that have except, exemptions are Canada, the US, South Africa, uh, etc. But that is also something that you can ask the maybe the student service center. Maybe they can tell you if you can get exempted if you tell them that you study completely in English and you also have like a, a certification from your school or something uh, like that. But that is only possible if you already send your application of or if you send them an email asking before. Uh, let me read this question. Is it possible if I want to apply for a master's in biotechnology, specialization in environmental and bio-based technology, but my background is physics because I have empowered community? So in some cases, maybe your bachelor degree is not completely relevant. So in your motivation letter, you can explain why you want to study this master's and what is your relevant experience and what have you done uh, in work or what have projects you have or in what type of community you live. So that can help you too. But uh, at the end, the decision is going to be made by the admission board. So if you want, I think it's better that you contact the study advisor in biotechnology and you tell what is your situation and what are, and they can tell you what are your options. So if you send me a, an email to students at board.nf, I can give you the specific contact details from the study advisors. Can I apply for more than one programs at once? Yes, you can apply to three different programs. Do you have any other questions? No, if you apply uh, for a first time and you're not admitted, you can reapply again. So you're not blacklisted. So I know a lot of cases of people that for instance have a little bit of a low score in the English exam. So they were able to, to apply later. So don't worry that you can apply again. Sorry, I think I missed a question. And uh, does applying to tourist program needs to have a science background? No, not necessarily. You don't have, you don't necessarily have to have uh, experience in, in science background. Uh, it just needs to be relevant. So if you go to the tourism, uh, tourism uh, program website, you can check what courses you're going to take and what type of program it is. And then you can see if your previous experience is relevant to the, to the program that you want to apply for. That is this is necessary for admission? No, it is not necessary. As long as you have your diploma, your GPA, your English exam, it is not necessary. But of course it has to be a high quality program, the, your previous education. I don't know if you saw um, my email, but I'm going to type it in the chat. One second. I hope you can all see it. Please let me know. You can send, oh, excuse me. I think I made a typo. This is student. That is my email. So you can ask me all your questions also via email. Um, browse briefly on PhD programs on one side and door and research group and study finder. There is no relevant PhD pos position. Is it possible to make contact? Yes, yes. So if it's possible to make a uh, direct contact with a professor that you're interested in working with for a PhD position, yes, of course it is. You can propose your, your research. You can talk to the teacher if they're interested in it. The thing is like in those cases it's a little bit more difficult to find funding. So you would have to apply for grants or well, if you're lucky, maybe there is some money in the research group, but of course you can contact the teachers and you can tell them what your ideas are. So what about recommendation from previous lectures or from supervisor from the current office? So they are not necessary, but in some cases, let's say that you're still missing uh, a little bit of the requirements or something. So it can be, uh, useful for matching purposes. Like let's say that there is a topic in your bachelor that was not completely relevant for the program you're applying for. 
So maybe a recommendation letter in those cases for matching purposes are useful, but they are not necessary. And are, they're also not part of the requirements. The part of the requirement is mainly your CV and your uh, motivation letter. Uh, any other questions? Because we only have five more minutes. So I would like to know if you have more questions. So tips to make a good motivation letter. Yes, of course. So first, I want to also invite you to two things. We have a YouTube channel that is called WordTube in, in YouTube. So there you have a lot of nice videos about the campus, about this programs, about the international students, et cetera. We also have the international students blog from Wageningen. You can just type that international students blog at Wageningen and you will find uh, all the blogs made by international students, including some about uh, how to write your motivation letters. But normally your motivation letter, what you have to write is well maybe give a little introduction about yourself and tell what your relevance experience is what you have studied what type of projects you have done and why you want to study at Wageningen what do you, how do you think this is going to add to your professional career uh, what motivates you to come to Wageningen all of these things so all of the information you can give about why Wageningen matches your interests that is one of the most important things you should mention So there is not a specific link or contact for PhD program requirements, because like I said, you have to um, apply for vacancies. I'm going to try to find the, the link for the vacancies that we have at board at the moment, but these are specific projects. You, so you just have to go to the, to the website and check if you like one of the projects and then you can apply for it. Like I said, it's more like a, a job application. So I'm going to put the link here in the chat. And that is like a work application. Like I said, you just need also an application letter. You probably need to, to send a motivation letter, well, et cetera, but you have to check that in the website. Then can I submit my application in November for the September intake? Yes, so you can send your application from the moment that the application period opens. And normally that is in October. So even if you want to apply for September, you can already apply the year before in October. And also, can I apply for any scholarships other than the scholarships OSHA is provided by Bert? Yes, you can apply for, as long as you have a sponsor, having your letter of admission, you can apply to other scholarships, even if they are not part of Wageningen University. Yes, yeah, so we only, I have one more minute, so I don't know if you have any last question, but if not, I'm very happy to have answered all of these questions and very happy to share the information with Wageningen. Like I said, I am an alumnus and I'm very happy that I came here to study. Uh, I really like the town, I really like my studies, so I can really recommend uh, coming here. Uh, you can always email me to students at word.nl and I hope this was clear and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.